so I was very happy for Sam Black. Uh, Sam Black is one of my favorite Magic players. I think recently he came out as gay, maybe? Um, I'm not sure, but uh, Sam Black is an innovator of Magic. He's someone who dedicated his entire life to Magic. And when the NPL happened, I thought that he was going to be one of the NPL members because of his creativity, his dedication. Um, at one point in time, lived with eight other dudes and, you know, we were just playing Magic. And he was not part of the NPL. And once, but he kept trying to become part of the NPL, he kept trying to agree with their politics. You know, it's a political game he was trying to play, a mind game. But it didn't work. And what is really sad about this story is now he had to get a real job. I think he got a job with Cryptozoic, which is a board game company. It's a pretty large board game company. The dream of being a professional Magic player, the days where this made any sense is over. The days that a Sam Black could go to bed and you know, with eight other dudes and think, hey, if I wake up tomorrow, if I play, if I innovate a new deck, I can make it. It's gone. The MPL was the death knell of this dream because now Wizard of the Coast has all the proof it needs that the pro magic is not good for it. You know, all, all it needs is look at Mr. Beast, Post Malone, see how many views that video has, and then look at how many views a Huey Jensen video has or a Autumn video has or a Jessica Epstein video has. And they would be like, hmm, there seems to be a large delta. And this, I mean, this concept isn't even new, right? I, I remember Tolarian Community College used to have, I think, Maria Maria. And they were heavily promoted. They were brand new Magic players, by the way, just like Autumn. In comparison to me, you know, I have played Magic since beta. They were new. And they got promoted, and for whatever reason, I mean, they had their podcast on Tolerant Community College's channel. I remember it got downvoted a lot. It doesn't make sense. At some point in time, Tolerant Community College, College had to sit them down and tell them, hey, you know, I'm all about gender equality, and I think you guys are great, but you need your own channel. You can't keep, you know, posting your content on my channel because it's hurting me. It's hurting my donations, it's hurting my patrons, it's hurting my views. I mean, they would be the least viewed, most disliked content on his channel by a large, large mar margin. I don't know if you guys remember, it was like a podcast and it was two Marias and it kind of was like, okay, so you're, why are they here? That is exactly how the NPL happened. Wizard Coast looked at it and they said, okay, why are these people here? And Sam Black had to find a job. And that is crazy talk to me. That is crazy, crazy that Sam Black, the innovator, the great deck designer. I mean, Sam Black is, to, in my opinion, one of the best Magic players of all time. And now he has to find a real job because after the eSports, which the Twitter, whoever's running eSports Twitter is probably going to lose their job in the next month anyway. Um, they announced they would no longer support professional play. There was no longer going to be the prize support. There was no longer get going to be the fleet free airplane tickets, the $250 attendance fee, right? What they got. There won't be any of this. I would even argue get rid of the Hall of Fame because it's a Hall of Shame. The Hall of Shame, right? Uh, Saito, right? And so on. How many of them cheated? I would say 90% of them. We just didn't have the video cameras and technology to catch it. It, it got so bad. Okay, this is how bad it got that they stopped video cameraing Magic Fest because there were so many people getting caught cheating all the time on live streams that they stopped making the live streams. <laughs> and they no longer had any, this was pre-COVID by the way. And COVID-19 gave them a really good excuse to go on you know, MTG Arena where cheating would be theoretically more difficult. But the dream, you know, it's kind of like the book of Grapes of Wrath, right? Or of Men and Mice. You have this dream. I think the guy was named Lenny. He has this dream of you know working with some other people, saving money, buying his own farm, and it just falls apart. Sam Black had that exact dream, and it fell apart with the NPL. And then once the NPL proved how incompetent it is, and by gosh, it was incompetent. Imagine spending a hundred million dollars and only getting a hundred views, and spending twenty thousand dollars and getting four million views. 
at some point in time, even Tolarian Community College had to let go Maria Maria because he realized it wasn't good for his brand and he was losing donations left and right. So at some point in time, Wizard of the Coast, Hasbro, somebody in the upper echelon has decided, oh shit, the MPL is losing money. Pro Magic is losing money. I don't want this to continue anymore. Let's, let's, you know, close, let's, la da, la da, right? It's done. And then they made the announcement that they weren't going to support professional magic play. And that's when Sam Black decided it's time to get a real job. And it is time. So if you're a professional magic player, hey, I have respect for you, unless you are the 90% that are really shady characters. You know, maybe you're Frank, maybe you're <laughs> Bacini, Bacini, maybe you're Saito, maybe you're someone else who have done, you know, something criminal, maybe a Conley or an Owen, or, you know, the list can continue on. What was that other dude, the dude, the rookie of the year, Jared? Yes, Jared, not from Subway, but we have our own kind of overweight Jared who did bad things. I mean, the, 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 the pro circuit, the pro magic thing is littered with cheaters and liars and predators. I mean, every judge, you know, just about every judge turned out to be a predator of some type. Um, we had lots of interesting stories to the point that Wizards of the Coast had to make a legal statement to protect themselves against their judges. And then the judges sued them and then Wizards of the Coast won. And now the judge, I mean, it's so, now the judges, they used to quote, get paid. Now they pay <laughs> the Academy, a third party company. You know, Wizards of the Coast has it nice because they just, never take rely no one is a w2 employee everyone some type of vendor contract with no they don't have any legal obligation to christine sprankles who is a great cosplayer in my opinion she never even got paid by hasbro or wizard of coach which is crazy because every other company blizzard league of legends riot games they pay for their cosplayers they pay for their you know to take pictures of them and promote them just like Christine Sprankles was the Averson of Las Vegas. She was her, she was being used everywhere online. And yet they didn't, apparently they didn't give her a dime. She was being, she was all over the Wizards of the Coast official website. That picture of her Averson in Las Vegas, that was their main marketing material. It didn't pay her a dime or a penny it turned out. And she was living in her trailer park. I mean, I'm so glad that this idea that you can be a professional magic player is dead. I'm so glad that MPL killed it. So, you know, props to the MPL because you do need to get a real job. You do need to start a business. You do need to do other things like Sam Block is doing. He's going to be great at this new job of his. He was never going to make it as a pro magic player. No one ever was. If you thought for the next 20 years you could be an MPL member and live off the gravy train that is the, the uh, Mythic Championship and the $70,000 would be, no, no. The cl first class of the MPL proved how incompetent they are. None of them were streaming, all of them were mentally depressed because I mean, if you were playing MTG Arena for eight hours a day, every day, wouldn't you be mentally depressed too? Hell yeah, <laughs> that's, just, that's not the type of game you can play for eight hours a day, every single day. Even though I would contest that Owen was the only one who actually did it that way. That Owen, with his own problems being a predator and whatnot, um, he was, you know, he was the only one who uh, lived up to the contract, if you will. The other members did not. And then you got a special invite. I, I mean... <sighs> The special invites are so bad, they had to get rid of the Planeswalker in system, which was kind of like an ELO recorded your records. Otherwise, like people like me would tear apart these special invites because they they honestly were the worst. It took me two seconds to realize, wait a second, these special invites have ELOs of 1300. Who are they? And then I Googled them and they're either employees of Wizard of the Coast or they're like, you know, they fit the, um, the political beliefs of Wizard of the Coast. Let me put that. And they get invited every time. So like, you know, they didn't, I don't think they ever, they never invited the number one player by ELO, Austin, as a special invite to any of the Mythic Championships. But they did invite, you know, certain other members who just suck at magic. 
I watch them play sometimes on Twitch, and it's like very painful. I'm not saying I'm a good Magic player, but I would challenge any of them on a you know whatever format they want, standard, modern, or historic. I guess we want modern or historic. Loser quits Magic forever. They would they've never accepted my challenge because they know I would crush them, and I'm a gold level. <laughs> Bye guys.